Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you may be in this wonderful world. Now something really exciting happened fairly recently, something wonderful, because look at me and my fancy new bearing biker duds and my scorpion crash helmet and my rucker gloves and my Falco Italian leather boots. A bunch of photo bikers from Biker Heads got in touch and they said, we love your videos, but the message was, you look like a tramp. So come on over and we're gonna outfit you with some proper gear. And you know, that's just awesome. Thanks guys. And you know the best thing, the management team at Biker Heads, they are all photo bikers. They're really into their bikes. They're really into their photography. So I'm looking forward to hanging out with you guys at Biker Heads a lot. You want some real top quality gear like bearing, rucker, Falco, etc. Go and check out their website. Find a distributor somewhere near you. So what are we doing down here? You can see there's water over there. Blue sky, sunshine, nice afternoon. Let's go for a bike ride. Let's maybe take some pictures. Now in the distance is Hurst Castle, built by Henry VIII, and I do believe that one of the King Charles's was once imprisoned there. Not sure what for. Maybe there's some information on the screen now. You know what I'm like with my history. But I think there could be quite a nice photograph, possibly if we walk along the shingle bank over there a little, because the light's just striking the edge of the castle, and there's a couple of boats there on the water. So let's just go down there and see what we can find. Because what I'm thinking is, let's do just a little afternoon ride along the coast. Have a look and see what we can find along the way. Take a few pictures, have fun. That is what it's all about, isn't it? What castle, I hear you say? It is so far away that with the super wide angle lens you're looking through, you can barely see it. But I promise you, over there is a castle. Look at that. And I rather like the boats down there too. And it's not a bad shot from here. The rolling hills you can see in the background are the Isle of Wight. Have I got any focal length left to try and sneak in a bit closer? Just a bit. No, I can. Let's focus on that boat there. Not that it makes much difference at this distance. That's quite nice from up here. I kind of like it. So let's take it. Line up our shot. What sort of exposure? Well, on a day like today, Everything's pretty much averaging out. There's lots of blues, a bit of haze in the air, but I would imagine what the camera does will be fine. And the only thing which is working in this shot is that tiny little bit of light on the side of Hurst Castle. So let's just balance the shot up a little bit. We've got a little bit of the gravel in the foreground. We've got some boats in the distance. There we go. It's not bad. It's not bad. But imagine how that might look if that light on the side of the castle was in the evening late afternoon. The sun's still quite high in the sky, but if it was really low and it was all kind of a bit red, there'd be a bit of a reddy glow going on, that would look really cool, wouldn't it? Let's move down the side of the bank a little bit and just compare two shots. So the plan is to use a little bit of this shingle as a leading line, and then we can compare the two, see which we prefer. Always work your destination, you know, you've gone somewhere you like. Well, let's not waste a moment of it. Let's see what the shot looks like standing up. It's not bad. Let's get that focal length going on. Put that to work. It's actually quite nice from here, isn't it? Look how that looks quite nice from here too, doesn't it? That's worth a shot. We'll do one of those. But then also, whoops, if we bend our knees, get lower, get lower, get lower. Here we go. We're bringing a little bit of the shingle bank into the foreground and I quite like the angle of the boat so let's do that one quickly. Flick it into camera mode. Where are we going to focus? Well it's the castle that's important I'm just going to focus over there but at this distance it really doesn't matter because everything is beyond the infinity point of the lens. I prefer that I think to the one from the top. Let's do one standing up. Slightly different angle and we're going to lose the gravel. There we go. Without gravel and with gravel. Which one do you prefer? I think my favourite one is this last shot we've just taken. Do you know what I mean? There's subtle little changes, but they make a world of difference to your pictures. Let's ride on somewhere else. Let's see what we can find along the seaside.
hey, check this out. Look at that. I can even look cool when I'm riding. Everybody is out enjoying the sunshine after a long and dreary English winter. Suddenly the sun has come out. Now I don't expect you could see a great deal of the sea as we were riding along because these lenses are so wide. But what I did notice is there is a lot of haze going on and I think that could look really nice because from here it's backlit. So. Let's see if there's something to be had from here. That is just kind of lovely, isn't it? And of course, thinking this is a wide angle shot as well, but seeing as we've got the long lens on, it seems to be long lens day, doesn't it? Let's have a go with a long lens and see what are we looking at? What are we thinking about? Well, look, down here we've got the entrance to Muddiford Quay but look right in front of it we sneak in that focal length look look at that sparkle on the water right there and all that hazy mistiness I think that looks kind of lovely the focus is having all sorts of problems in keeping up it does that sometimes but I think that looks really nice we're just going for that misty look that's what we got today so let's exploit it I'm at about 200 millimeters, just under crop sensor, but don't worry about those numbers and things. Whatever works, works. Just go for what looks right. What about an exposure? Now it is a very bright day. Let's see what we got. So let's do a shot. Just what the camera says, I think, will be about right. If we make all that brightness into a mid-gray, because cameras think the world is mid-gray, I think it would probably look quite good. But it might look good if we did a brighter one too. So let's do one at what the camera says. We're going for the low down look again, aren't we? I think a brighter one might actually be better. So what should we do? Well, let's just open up our aperture a little bit and just make the shot brighter and try another. There it goes. I think the brighter one's nice. Why don't we try one that's darker as well? So this time I'm gonna decrease the aperture, take it about a stop there about under so there's the dark one, here's the one that's brighter, and there is the one in the middle. Again, which do you prefer? Because composition and exposure, they hold hands. How bright or dark your picture is, that is of course all part of what you choose about your picture. I'm going to pop the wide lens on, you look at that for a minute. Did I say long lens? I think I might have done. I am losing my marbles. Wide lens. Let's have a look. See what that looks like. Let's go really wide and include all sorts of things. There's a little bit of light just catching onto some sleepers in front of me. I've got the exposure quite dark, but look how that light is catching just down here. I love the light there. I like the color, which is just sneaking into that horizon and having the sun in the sky. All this is quite dark. But there is just a little bit of detail in it. Can we brighten it up just a touch? Yeah, we can, but I think it might be too far gone. The darker look is better. And I'm gonna actually tilt the composition down a bit and include more of the foreground like that. I do quite like it. I'm gonna see what happens if we go down lower. So I don't know if you can see me when I do this, but let's just move forward a bit and just crouch down here real low and see what happens if we just kind of come lower onto that piece of timber that piece of wood which do you prefer so here's the low down one do you know what these new biker trousers are pretty cool they've got knee pads that was really nice instead of having a pebble digging into my kneecap there's the low one there's the standing one then we got the bright one and the middle one and the darker one 
Interesting, isn't it? This is just all about understanding how to use your exposure controls as part of your composition, because how you want your shot to look is, of course, entirely up to you. Go and check out my Masterclass in Photography online course. I know I'm being bossy about this, but you know, I see so many comments underneath these videos going, how do you know where to focus in a shot like that? How do you know which settings to use for a shot like that? Why did you compose the picture like that? Why does it work when the light's coming towards the camera like that? These are questions that I can't answer in a YouTube comment, but I can answer them in my Masterclass in Photography online course, and it does exactly that. This looks kind of pretty down here, doesn't it? I wonder if we've got time to go and have a look in here, because I really don't want to miss any hot sunset action. But you know what? There could be something down here. There is only one way to find out, isn't there? And that is to go and see. Let's just park illegally for a minute. Go take a look. It's a nice bit of seaside, isn't it? Look at the little beach huts going on down there in the sea. But also look where the sun is. It's up over there. And I'm not so sure it'll work. I think this will all just go into shade. Whereas if we went to the entrance of Muddiford Quay where we were photographing earlier and then round the side of the harbour, I think it would be better. But isn't it just glorious? Isn't it just a glorious day? Isn't that pretty? Yeah, I know, this is somewhere we've been before, isn't it? But what's wrong with going somewhere you've been before? Because each time it's going to be different, because each time the light will be different. What's going on down there will be different, the weather will be different. This place on a stormy day, with dark, thundery clouds, is a very different place to what it is today. Now we've got this haze going on in the sky. And I think it's really rather lovely. Look at the water over here. Look at that kind of oily, silky smoothness to that water. And the needles in the Isle of Wight over there in the distance. My friend Jürgen, who lives in Switzerland, where I run a two-day week on workshop, he lives near a very pretty little lake and every day he goes down to the lake, has a coffee, checks his phone and takes a few pictures and he's an expert on that lake he knows exactly where to go in what weather in what light and he's got some awesome photographs of it because his knowledge is good he goes back don't be afraid to go back to the same place more than once because it can work let's go over there have a quick look so what are our possibilities here? There are many. The light's lovely, look. There's the light coming in from over there. And over here, look what we've got going on over here. Now I know there's all these lobster pots and it's easy to get very, very carried away with things like this. But you know what? There's a great little shot just over here. I've taken it many times in all sorts of different light, but it does kind of work. There's also a little lesson in composition here. Can you see what's going on there? We've got this little headland coming out. We've got the Isle of Wight off in the distance, which is so tiny in your screen, you probably can't see it. So I'll set up my other camera. We'll have a look through that, shall we? Now, I know everyone wants to get a picture with a boat in it. I don't. What I am interested in is this little headland sticking out here. 
let me show you because here's a little composition tip for you now if we kind of just get that bit of video going now look remember we've been talking about focal length and composition we could just kind of come in a little bit like this we can have the headland coming in from this side here and we've got the Isle of Wight balancing the other side look as we make the focal length a bit longer so the two come together well what I don't like is how look they're overlapping here well did you know you can move an island in your composition check this out look as I start walking this way Watch what happens. As I'm moving to my left, look, the island's coming with me. Look, we've got a gap. We've now got a gap in here, which wasn't there before. And I just think that looks nicer because it just balances the shot. So let's take it quickly. And also, of course, you can still do all sorts of things with your focal length in order to make a shot work. So let's just use it like this, 55 millimeters, which I think is quite nice. I love the light on there. Get my exposure right. Camera's saying a 60th is too bright. I'm gonna go 125 F13. Histogram looks good. Everything's lovely. I'm gonna do the negative space thing again and put it fairly low in the frame. What do we got? I rather like it because I like the light and I like the haze in the distance and that misty island off in the background. Now, let's come back this way and take that shot that we were talking about just now. Look, if I do the same thing from here, we've got this overlap with the island and the headland. Island and headland almost touching. Island and headland with the space between them. Now, I'm not saying one is right and one is wrong. What I am saying is you need to be aware of these things and realize that you can move an island around in the composition if you want to. You've just got to use this thing and understand how composition works. Yes, it's all in my masterclass, obviously. Let's go and have a look somewhere else. There's a rather lovely silhouette -y thing going on right here, isn't there? And also from where you are, I don't think you can see, but there is some light and it's picking up on the side of a wall here. Doesn't that look great? And it's the light bouncing off the water hitting that wall. But then we've also got the shape of this house going on. And I think that will all work as a silhouette. Now we don't really want to be able to see this, do we? That concrete post. So how would we do it? Really simple, isn't it? This one really is a bit of a lesson in exposure, isn't it? We just reduce the exposure. So as we make it darker, look, that post has now disappeared into the shadow behind it. And we're kind of, if I move this way a bit, look, and we're really making the most out of that little bit of light, which is reflecting there and the lonely boat. It's quite good, doesn't it? You see, you don't actually have to dig up a concrete post in order to lose it from your picture. When you understand how to use the camera and exposure and all these other things creatively. So that shot is probably about a stop and a half underneath what the camera says it should be. Let's just take it. I'm using my little 18 to 55 mil lens. Ah, somebody has just come and sat on the corner. So we're gonna have a little human head shape there, but never mind. Right, let's do, first of all, what the camera says would be nice. I'm just gonna to move to my left just a touch, get that composition how I want it. That's kind of nice. You can't really notice the guy sitting on the corner. He sat down in between talking to you and taking the shot. Let's go a little darker. Let's just see what happens if we just take that exposure down a bit. Now we've got someone else come walking around the corner. How dare people come out here and have a nice evening? So let's take that exposure down a bit. I just need to see we've got a couple of people walking around there. I need to hopefully... I quite like the skateboarder actually. Let's get him on the light path there. You see, there's always an opportune moment. It's always worth waiting and seeing what happens because you can often use these things. I do believe there's another one coming any moment now. Watch, one, two, click. There we go, but I like that one with the girl in the light path, the holding hands. You've got to be aware of everything that's going on. Things like that are the reason why I keep banging on about learning how to use your camera, because until you can use your camera without having to think about it, until it's second nature, until you 
give it as much attention as you would breathing. Really, you're at the start of your journey. You might think you know what you're doing, and that's fine, you probably do, but if you've got to think about it, you're still at the start of the journey because real photography is moments like that. I'm not going to take another one because I'm absolutely delighted with what I just got. That, to me, is epic. So anyway, I think that brings us to the end of a lovely day or a lovely afternoon. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to come out and do some of this stuff with me, I've set up a photo biker workshop. So if you like riding motorbikes and you like taking pictures, how about coming spending three days with me? I'll show you around, we'll explore, we'll do some cool stuff. And of course, coach some photography. And I would also want you to go home with some cool pictures of you on your bike. If you're not into bikes, I've got loads of other workshops too in various countries, which you could come on and there won't be a motorbike in sight. However, you will have a great time and we'll take some great pictures. So be well, take care of yourselves, and I look forward to seeing you next time.